So I'm going to hit record down here. Okay. And you will have, we will add it to the next email. There will be a page on my website that's just for your class and it's password protected. And we, the, the recordings are put on YouTube, but they're unlisted. So the only way anybody else will see them is if you choose to share the link, which you just paid for the class. So don't do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so they'll be saved on this website and this web page. You can't, you won't be able to hit a, a drop down and see the page. It's hidden. You'll just click on the link in the email and then there will be a password for it that you put in and that's where all your lessons will be saved. You can go back and watch them as many times as you'd like. Okay, because you're going to learn some different things than you've heard before. And sometimes we go, okay, how did she say that exactly? Or what order did she do that in? And you try to take really good notes. But after seven days, you only remember 10% of what you hear. So realize those are there for you because repetition is a huge tool in you becoming successful and making the changes and changing habits that you want to do to then find more customers on a regular basis. Okay, so those tools, we record these calls for a very specific reason, because we know it will help you be more successful. Okay, now just so you know, um, my first company I was with was scrapbooking. I hardly meet anyone anymore who's still selling scrapbooking via party, but I was doing scrapbooking. I lived in North Dakota where it was very cold and even gets a little colder than New Jersey, but I kind of have a joke that damn cold and damn cold is damn cold. It really doesn't, you know, minus 50 and minus 70 is just like unreasonable period. So anyway, but I lived in a very, very, very cold, hard place and every town was a hundred miles, one direction to get to. So I'd do 200 miles, but luckily gas was like 99 cents a gallon then. So that wasn't too bad. But we, I had a thriving business there because when you live in the middle of nowhere, the nice thing is they have no other place to shop. So that was, that's kind of a perk to living in the middle of nowhere when you do sale, direct sales. But we moved to Montana and all of you know, if you're going to get your override commission, you have to have sales. You have to have personal sales. So we moved to Montana and I had no circle of influence, my friend. I didn't know a single soul there. My husband knew who he interviewed with and that was it. So we moved to Montana and I decided I had a goal to book eight parties in 30 days. That was my goal, not knowing anybody. And I got to work and that's exactly what I did. So I've done the hard of the hard. Okay. Um, you guys all know a few people and there might be a few people that you haven't talked to yet. Maybe you've talked to everyone, you know, but either way I can teach you how to talk to people and find customers in all different walks of life, okay? Some of it is you thinking outside the box. Some of it is you putting yourself in the right places. Some of it is talking to people that maybe you wouldn't normally talk to, but we're gonna talk about a variety of ways to do it, but you can build a customer base from ground up, even if you didn't know a single soul where you live, okay? So is that hopeful? Excited? Okay, all right. So one of the first things that's really important um, that for you to hear is what I very first did, and that was I set a goal. Did you hear that? I set a goal to book eight parties in 30 days, okay? That is your very first step. No matter what you do with me, whether you do a recruiting class, a sales class, a finding new customers class, it's always going to start with goal setting. It's incredibly important. It fuels your fire. It helps you create the habits you need. It's very, very, very important that you always are writing down your goals on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, and keep those around you. And you will see amazing things happen when you write down your goals, right? So hopefully Jillian and Michelle, you'll get a second to print when after this class is over to print out your book. Um, did you print your book, Sue? Yes. Okay, awesome. So I want you on a piece of paper or on your book, I want you to throw a number out and I just want you to have fun with it. And it's okay if the number changes later. I want you to throw a number out 
and don't worry about it if you don't know how to do it or if you're worried it won't happen. I want you to throw a number out as to how many new customers you want to find in the next four weeks. Just pick a number, throw it out. How many new customers do you want to find in the next four weeks? Okay, did you get a number? Mm hmm Okay. Okay, all right. So do that, and then we're gonna start talking about what you wanna have happen in the next week. So as we go about this lesson, I want you to be thinking about, because it's probably gonna grow, you're probably gonna have a few people this week, you're gonna have more people the next week and more people the next week and more people the last week because your skills will get better and better and better and better, okay? And when you're thinking about these activities, I want your calendar open and I want you to think about when you're gonna do it. Because one of the things is 90% of what we do in our life is out of habit. It's incredibly important to understand that. That when you're not, when you like just head into a grocery store, do your thing, walk out, get in your car, you just, that's just what you normally do. And for you to start thinking about, hey, who's around me? Who needs to, you know, who needs my makeup? Who needs my products? Gosh, I need to slow down and see who there is. Or, hey, what comments have people made on Facebook? Who do I need to start a conversation with? So sometimes what you're not doing is simply because it's not a habit, okay? And we'll talk more about that in a minute. So back to goal setting for just a second. Um, actually, we're gonna do that last, and I have a reason for that, okay? Okay, all right. What I want you to do is let's, we're actually gonna flip-flop this just because I feel like that's what we're supposed to do. Sometimes I just kind of do things because I feel good about them. One of the things I want to do is first go clear down to number five. We're going to talk about creating opportunities because I need you brainstorming, okay? While we talk about this, I really need you brainstorming about the different places you spend time and the different places you could spend more time and be proactive about going to, okay? So let's talk about opportunities that you have to meet people, okay? So I want you to write down five to 10 places you know you will go in the next seven days. Grocery store, doctor's office, wherever it might be, okay? Where are the different places that you go every single week? Okay, now I also, as you're doing that, I want you to think about where, which social media sites you cho choose to spend time on, what groups you're a part of, both online and in your live face-to-face, -face. okay? Got that. Now, I want you to think about, do, have any of you participated in any networking or women's organizations or groups? Okay, you have a little bit, Jillian? Yes, yeah. Sue? Okay, are those things that you participate in regularly? 
Staley. Are they, say it again, are they what? Do, are they places that you participate in on a regular basis? Mm. No, okay. All right. How about, do you know of any, Michelle? In networking groups, like on Facebook or? Face to face. Like, face to face, no. No, okay. How about you, Jillian? Yes. Yes, so do you go regularly now? I go, we have weekly meetings, and then we have a monthly meeting where it's four different chapters that go. Oh, cool. Okay. So you do have one that you participate in. It kind of, it's more of a support group, but a lot of us are uh, home-based business women as well. So we do our support group and our home-based business and talk and share our experiences. Okay. All right. Have you ever sold anything to any of them? Once. Once. Okay. All right. So if you know, if, whatever your current networking groups are that you have and ones that you've heard of, I want you to put those down. Okay. I want you to brainstorm, brainstorm, brainstorm. And then I want you to think about where the people are that are your frequent clients. Where do they hang out? Like, where would you find them? Would you find them at mommy's groups? Would you find them in Mecca file the mall? Would you find them, you know, at the gym? Where would you find people who are most likely to use your product? Okay, so tell me how long is that list? Count how many different places you have on there. Fourteen. Fourteen, awesome. Jillian, how many do you have? Five. <laughs> Five? Okay. Five. Five, that includes all the different brainstorming places I suggested. Those are the five that I go to the most. The other areas I'm still learning around here, so okay, I don't, I don't think places, They're not all places you actually go to. They're places that you do go to or could go to. Okay, in that case, that's a longer list. <laughs> okay, so keep writing. Yeah, that's why Sue has 14, because I know Sue doesn't actually 15. go to 14 places. What did you say? 15. Oh, 15. Yeah. So this is a brainstorming session, Jillian. This isn't just the places you go now. This is places you could go also. Okay. So Michelle, how many are you up to? Um, eight. Eight. Okay. Keep going. 16. There you go, Sue. What stores, what activities, um let's see i know jillian has kids michelle do you have children yes okay where do you go with your children okay what hobbies do you have what activities are you in your children in what hobby have you wanted to start okay that list is going to grow as we talk okay because it's the activities we're going to do is fuel those creative juices. All right. Okay. Are you kind of seeing some opportunities on your list? Are you kind of going, oh, there might be some places to meet people? Mm -hmm. okay. Now, I want to know at this point, are you more excited or more scared? If you're more excited, give me a wave. If you're more scared, give me a wave. Both. Oh, okay. You are more <laughs> excited, but the fear is a little high too. Okay. Um, okay. That's all right. Okay. Hopefully by the end we'll, we'll offset that. Okay. All right. So, but is there a tiny little more hope, even though the fear is high, a little more hope. Okay. All right. Okay. So let me tell you 
one of the amazing things with goal setting is that it's so cool. Okay, this is so fun. All those places that you either currently go or could put in your schedule and choose to start going to more often, when you put down your goals as to finding the people who need you. So think about this for a minute. Do all of you feel pretty strongly that somebody needs your product or somebody needs your business opportunity? Do you love what you do and what you have to offer? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So I want you to think about this. Think about that there are people out there who are setting goals. Maybe they want to feel more attractive on the outside. Maybe they want to feel better on the inside. Maybe they need a business opportunity. Okay? There are people with these little heartfelt goals that are literally waiting to meet you. And if you don't work on your goal of finding people who need that business opportunity, if you don't work on that goal of sharing your product because somebody else needs it, that means somebody else can't accomplish theirs. There's this amazing kind of energy and synergy that happens when you set your goals and work on them and somebody else has that heartfelt goal. All those places that you listed, now and then in one of those places you're gonna meet someone that you didn't expect to meet who has a particular goal that you can help them accomplish. Okay, how does that feel, the idea of being able to help somebody else accomplish their goals? Like on a scale of one to 10, how exciting is that? 10. 10, okay. Sue, Jillian, what did you say? 10. 10, okay. So when you take that and you kind of go forward and you start choosing to be in these places, and then I'm gonna teach you how to kind of open up conversations, you're gonna be amazed what happens and how you can connect and help people in a way that you never expected. Okay, it's really, really fun. So with that in mind, I want you to pick a number. And first of all, you're gonna pick a number of just how many people you're gonna meet. All of those will not turn into customers and it's totally okay, all right? First of all, we just need to get you braver at just talking to people in general. So first of all, we're gonna set a goal as to how many pe new people you're just gonna meet this week. And then you're gonna set a goal as to how many of those people will actually turn into customers. Okay, so think about that for a minute because there's somebody who is waiting to meet you. Okay, the really fun thing about this is, and I'm gonna to talk to you about it in just a second, is when you start opening your mouth and just start having more conversations with people, you're gonna meet amazing people with stories that keep you motivated. Almost everybody is just having some sort of bizarre hard right now. Could be financially, could be health, could be relationships. Everyone is struggling in some sort of way. Nobody has it smooth, just nobody does. And when you learn how they're dealing with their hard, you're gonna get inspired by people and you're gonna have more fun talking to people than you ever thought you would. Even if you're someone that you consider shy, you are the best listeners, which actually makes you the best salespeople because you don't sell vomit on people, okay? So even if you feel shy, there's amazing things that you can do, okay? So first of all, you've thought about some places you're gonna be. You've now set a goal as to how many people this week you're gonna meet and how many of them are gonna turn into customers. So I want you to let that kind of mull around in your heart and I'm gonna give you some skills to now when you're out and about and you do meet someone, how you can start a conversation and how you can turn that into finding out if they need something that you have. The one thing I promise you is I'm not gonna make you talk about your product unless it seems pretty obvious they need what you have. Does that feel like whew, She's not just gonna make me like talk to everybody. You don't, you don't have to talk to everybody about your product. In fact, I don't want you to. I want you to first find out if they have what you need, or sorry, if you have what they need before we talk about what we offer. Does that kind of take a little load off, okay? No, no self vomiting, no just a door opening, just load it on them, okay? So 
So let's think about this for a minute. The first thing we want to do is learn how to just start a few conversations. Now you can do this online and you can do it face to face. Okay. And you can use private messaging there. You can use every one of these tools, both face to face and online. And if you need a little help knowing how to tweak it, like if I don't slow down and explain it well enough, let me know if you're someone who spends a lot of time online building your business and making connections. Okay, sound good? So the first mm -hmm. thing you're gonna do is have some conversation starters. The first one I like that's almost pretty easy for everybody is just simply giving a compliment. Abraham Lincoln has said, everyone loves a compliment. Y'all just hate it when somebody tells you how cute your shoes are or how nice your you know, eyelashes look or what a cute sweater you have on, okay? We just all hate that, don't we? Okay, mm -hmm. really easy to just give a compliment and get something started. But one of the things you need to remember is sometimes you need a follow-up question with that compliment to keep the conversation going. Because sometimes people just say, oh, thank you. And then the conversation can die. So let's say you compliment their purse. Oh my gosh, love that color. Cutest bag ever. Hey, where'd you get that? That opens up the conversation, okay? You need to have just a little question afterwards. Um, you know, even if it's like, wow, your kids are so well behaved. What an amazing mom you are. You know, are you a stay at home mom or do you work from home? How old are your kids? Okay, have a nice little question afterwards so it gets them talking. Okay, so the first one's compliments. You can compliment what they're buying. Wow, you're just really healthy. Look at the great food. Or, Wow, you look like such a great mom. Looks like a fun party that you're planning. Or, wow, look at, you know, whatever it is. There's lots of compliments from their shoes to their smile to their earrings to all sorts of things. And then have a follow-up question after to get the conversation going. Now, how many of you, and I need to know honestly so I can help you, how many of you that this is the most terrifying thing you've ever been asked to do? On a scale of 1 to 10, who's way scared? Okay, Jillian, you're way scared. Tell me what's scary about it. I don't like talking to people, really. I'm way too scared of doing it. I'm extremely shy. And I don't know really how to approach people, per se. I just moved to a new city. I know nobody. And I don't speak the language, so that's a new thing. I speak two languages, but the one language they speak here, I don't speak. <laughs> There's still quite a bit of English. Not really. Everyone on my block does not speak English. They all speak Hindi. Okay. <laughs> so so you're, gonna, different. you're gonna have to go to a, my, a you know mall that's ten miles away, or you're gonna have to get creative about it. Okay. And they're working on learning English, so maybe you end up somebody's English tutor. You just never know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let yourself open up. It's really, really fun to learn about other cultures. What other language do you speak? Is it Spanish? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, but you're in California, so you know that there's people who are Spanish speaking too. So oh, yeah. you just, you just got to give yourself that opportunity. You don't have to sell to your next door neighbor. You might sell to someone that lives a couple blocks away. Okay. But let yourself have this opportunity. Okay. So... If you really are terrified, if you want to just simply start with when you walk by somebody and they have a shirt on that's your favorite color, hey, love your shirt. You can keep walking. You don't have to have a conversation. If that's where you need to start to get outside your comfort zone, you're going to move a little bit slower, but you'll still be moving. Okay. How comfortable is it just giving someone a compliment? It's still scary. I get it. But I promise you, you'll have a couple good experiences. You'll see someone just light up and be like, oh, well, thanks. And you'll be like, oh, that was fun. I can do that again. Okay. I just need you to just try it. And then you can send me a quick message and go, oh, my gosh, I didn't die. <laughs> okay. Because I get that's how you're feeling. Okay. I get it. It makes your heart pound. It makes you like. I'm not sure I even want to keep talking to Michelle, okay? I get that. It's okay. You'll like me in the end. It'll be okay. <laughs> okay? 
So I want you to think about how many people do dare just simply give a quick compliment to. Okay. All right. How about Sue and Michelle? How is that feeling? I'm fine with that. Yeah. I talk to anybody. That's yeah. Okay. Not the problem. <laughs> it's okay. Everybody's on different spectrums. Okay. But that's why we got to help the person who like, I don't just talk yeah. to anybody. It'll get better, Jillian, I promise. Nobody's going to throw rotten tomatoes at you or run screaming or anything, okay? So I don't know why. Sometimes we have kind of irrational thinking, something terrible is going to happen, you're not going to know what to say. People love to talk about themselves. If you just get them started, they'll do all the talking. My poor husband, who's an introvert, learned that a long time ago after hanging out with his loud wife, okay? So it'll be okay, I promise. All right, so the next one... Um, on conversation starters, so you've got giving compliments. I like things like being curious. Hey, tell me about the laundry detergent. I've seen that, you know, advertised on TV, but I've never tried it. What do you like about it? Hey, what are you cooking for dinner with those ingredients? Hey, where do you work? You look so nice and professional today. There's lots and lots of curious questions that you can ask people, and you just got to try some and see which ones you like best. And it's nice to kind of Okay, if you think about the questions, like you ladies that sell, you know, unique in the makeup, anything you can start a conversation, ask them a question that has to do with their appearance, that's a nice way that it might turn into a conversation about your product, okay? Whereas Sue, someone who um, looks like they're nutrition conscious, or they're trying to make some effort to make some good choices, or someone who just looks really nice, someone who's going on a trip, like things that would open up doors for your product. You want to think about, you know, okay, what kind of comment could I make here that might take me down that road? If you can't come up with anything, it's okay. Still compliment their shoes, their bag, and just see what happens. Sometimes it won't turn into a conversation about your product. It's totally okay, but some will. That's the thing you gotta remember. You might get a couple, it's not that they're no's, you just didn't quite get to that point to talk about your product, but it you will get closer, you'll get a couple, they don't work out, and then all of a sudden one will, then one or two won't work out, and then a couple will, and then you know there's no like consistency, but as long as you're talking to people, some will turn into customers, and some you'll just get to know something fun about them, and some are just too tired to talk to you, don't take it personal, it, you know, you don't smell bad or anything like that. They just are tired. Okay. Just remember people are busy and tired. Don't take it personal. Okay. So being curious. Um, I love um, finding common ground. Things like, so Sue could go to any store and go, man, how tired of you are you of the snow? How many, you know, how many inches or feet of snow do you think you've shoveled this year? Okay. How excited are you for spring? Or what kind of things, you know, are you looking forward to spring break? Are you going anywhere fun? So imagine, you know, are you going to do anything fun for spring break and get the heck out of this, you know, snow, you know, our little frozen environment here? Well, if they're going somewhere, how many of them want to slim down? You want to look for those opportunities. When it was January, I had everybody asking, hey, are you a New Year's resolution starter? So think about what that would say. You know, that brings up our appearance and weight a lot. That's a great opportunity to then know that you are you can move into that conversation. Okay? So you want to think about these questions that can move you into that. Okay? I love even just silly things like talking about where I live. We live, this little area is called Tri-Cities because we have Richland, Kenwood, Pasco. And I might be shopping at a Target in Richland and three people behind me, you know, we might all live in three different cities. And it's just fun to ask them which city they live in and why and what they like about it and where they're from. And I just love talking about my town because I love it here. So things like that. The more you can talk about things that are positive, the better, or at least make them light and kind of funny versus just complaining. People don't like to be around people who complain or negative. So you want to be careful on the snow and weather one. You want to kind of make it light and funny and make fun of the situation versus vent and be really upset about it. Okay. That usually goes over better. Okay. So think about these conversation starters. And at the very first of your workbook, you have a place that says, which conversation starters am I going to work on this? Am I going to use this week? 
you might use all of them. Maybe you're just going to go for it, okay? But it's good to pick a couple and get so they roll off your tongue. Because, you know, when you try something new and you go to say it and you, you know, see someone at the grocery store, at the gym, at the school, wherever it might be, and you go to give a compliment and it's not something you've been doing, you might kind of stammer and kind of trip over your own tongue a little bit, okay? Practice on your kids, on your husband, on your dog, in the mirror, out loud to yourself, in the car, whatever. But practice what you're going to say so it comes out smoother and you feel more confident and you don't feel like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? Because your mind will go blank a little bit if you're a little nervous, okay? So be sure and take some time to practice. It'll be okay, Jillian. <laughs> It'll get better than you think, okay? But you can do this online too. When you notice something going on with somebody, have a conversation with them. When you see their daughters getting ready for prom, mention something about it, okay? Now, one of the things that's going to happen is you're going to get talking to people now and then. Could be online, could be face-to-face. -face. <laughs> and you're going to have something come open. They're going on a trip. They're getting married. They, you know, starting a new job. And you're going to see, gosh, you know, I wonder if they want to, you know, bring, you know, get something new, bring up their appearance a little bit. I wonder if they want to do something that's a little more healthy, you know. You're going to start thinking about these things. And instead of just going in, hey, if you're traveling, or, you know, and you're putting on a bathing suit, I bet you're wanting to be smaller. Let me tell you about these crazy wraps. Okay. <laughs> So let me tell you about why you don't want to do that. I want you to think about that for a moment. First of all, it sounds kind of salesman-y, right? And that's what we're all avoiding. None of us want to feel pushy or salesy. And the other thing is, if you think about this for, the minute, for a minute, the last time you were talking to somebody about something inventing, could be your husband, could be a girlfriend, could be your mom or your sister, and you're explaining the situation, how frustrating it was, you're venting. And they go, well, why don't you just try this idea? Like, how much do you just kind of want to go, hey, talk to the hand. I needed to vent. I needed you to hear me. Like, it doesn't go over very well. Okay? And this is why. The reason is because it kind of makes us feel like we're stupid. And like, well, do you not think I'm bright enough to come up with a couple of solutions on my own? I've tried a whole bunch, and I still can't figure this out, and it's still hard, and I'm still sad, and I'm still frustrated. Like, we don't want someone to just come in like the hero, dun 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 I'm here to save the day because you were too dumb to figure it out. It, like, it just doesn't go over well, right? And yet, their intentions were pure. Like, have you ever talked to your husband and he's like, yeah, I thought you were dumb. Or was he like, I thought you wanted a solution. I was just trying to help. That's what they always tell us, right? I mm -hmm. thought you were venting to me so I would give you a solution. And here, the poor guy their heart's in the right place, but we're still irritated that they didn't just stop and listen, okay? The same thing happens when somebody starts venting about something where we go, oh, we might have a product for that, okay? And we want to share it with them. So this is what you do so that that awkward either sales or husband to save the day kind of thing doesn't happen. So you have this three-step process. It's really easy, and it saves, helps the other person save face and show you everything that they've done to try it. So then you can go, oh, you know what? Maybe there's another idea I have that you haven't tried yet. So we want to give them all the benefit of the doubt of the fact they've tried everything they can come up with at this point. Okay, does that make sense? So the very first thing you're going to ask is, hey, I'm curious. Tell me, what have you tried so far to solve that problem? So let's say somebody's going, oh, I'm trying to lose some weight before I go on this spring vacation or this, you know, spring break vacation. Hey, tell me what you've tried so far. Okay. Or man, I've been wanting a new look and I'm looking on Pinterest. I'm not sure what to do. Okay. Tell me what you've tried so far or what have you found on Pinterest? Okay. So we ask first, what have you tried so far? And then we let them tell us all the different solutions they've personally come up with at this point. Okay, so think about that for a minute. If your husband or your sister who come in with the, you know, hero answer, how much different that would make you feel if they said, gosh, that is frustrating. What have you tried so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, it shows respect and it say, helps them to save face. Okay, now the next thing you're going to ask, and it's really, really, really important how you ask this, okay, because it's got to be an open-ended question, meaning they're going to answer 
with sentences and not a yes, no. It's real tempting to say, well, did that work? No, you have to say, how well did it work? How effective was it? Or something like on a scale of one to 10, how close did it help you get to your goal? Because if you say, well, did it work? They may have went, well, yeah, I guess. Not realizing that there's something else out there that would actually be a, a, a solution that would get them closer to the goal than the thing is they tried. So how well did that work? What, what need, you know, in what ways did it work? And in what ways did it kind of let you down and not give you what you were looking for? We need to hear, the whole goal is to hear some needs and to find out what it is that they were looking for that the last thing didn't accomplish. Okay. So tell me how well that worked. So it could be makeup they tried. It could be a weight loss system they tried. There's lots of different things out there that claim it shrinks and, you know, without plastic surgery, there's all sorts of different things that you're comparing to, okay? So when they answer you, you go, wow, you've tried a lot of things like compliment them, give them, you know, all the benefit of the doubt of how hard they work to solve this problem. And then we've got this little magic sentence. And what we want to say, and there's two things that are important to include in it, and then you can kind of tweak the rest of the words the way you would say it. First of all, I like to say, hey, you know what, I know someone who had a similar situation. It's very tempting to say, I know someone who had the exact same situation, and I have the perfect solution. No, nope, that doesn't go over well either for some reason, okay? Starts to make us feel like we're gonna be convinced, we're gonna be sold, just doesn't go over well, okay? So instead what you wanna say is, hey, I know someone who had a similar situation. Now, even if it's you, you still use the third person because it makes it sound like a referral. People like to know there was someone besides you that it worked for. I don't know why people don't like to take our, um, our word for things. But they always like it when we say somebody else we knew. I don't know, okay? I, someday I'll figure out the psychology of that, but that's just what happens. You know, someone who had a similar situation, I would love to share with you a little bit about what they're doing or what they're using so you can decide if it's a good fit for you. So when you use those words, see if it's a good fit for you, it puts it back in their court. They're like, oh, she's gonna let me decide this. She's not gonna try to shove it down my throat and make me decide. She's just giving me the opportunity to learn about something new, okay? It keeps the walls down. It keeps you feeling comfortable. You don't act like a salesperson, okay? The whole thing goes a lot better. And say, can I share something with you? When we ask permission, it keeps people engaged. So the funny thing is, this is the one thing that you all are avoiding. All of you know that nobody's gonna throw tomatoes at you and go running, uh, you know, down the hall. Don't talk to Michelle, she's gonna talk about mascara. Or, you know, most of the time they're not actually going to unfriend you and block you on Facebook or, you know, like nothing really bad happens. This is all that you're worried. If you're talking to somebody face to face, this is all your worried is going to happen. If you start talking about your product and they go, it's that little pull back and their eyes get big and it's like, oh crap. Now they feel like I'm a salesperson. And then you know what you usually do? You start talking even faster because now you're worried you're going to lose them. And then it gets even worse and it just goes downhill. Okay. So when you feel that happen, because sometimes the door opens and we start talking and we can be talking too much, what you can do is just when you see that look on their face, they kind of pull back, their, little, their body language just pulls back and their eyes get a little bigger. All you do is stop, like totally stop what you're saying and go, can I ask you another quick question? And then they come back in because now they're curious what you're going to say. Like when you feel yourself make that mistake, and it, it will happen, and I have even done it myself, and I teach this, okay? When you feel that happen, just say, just take a deep breath, slow down. Can I ask you a quick question? <laughs> and you can go back to just the common questions, or you can say, Tell me what, what makeup you like more than any other makeup out there. Or what's the one thing you don't leave the house without it on? Or what do you like about, what's, what's something fun you're doing to help improve your health? Like go back to a question that gets them talking. 
Okay. All right. So this is one of those things where you can start talking to people and start making connections better than you ever have because you have better tools to talk to people and you don't need to sell vomit on anyone. Okay. So look at your, look at your list of places that you go and could go. Look at the conversation that I've given you and how you can start conversations. The other very best thing to do, like if you're in a networking group, if you're in a situation where you're sitting longer and you're supposed to get to know the person next to you versus at an aisle in a grocery store, and say, tell me a little bit about what you do. When you ask them about their career, they almost always turn around and ask you about yours. Okay? So that is an awesome way. Always, like seriously, do everything you can to be the first person to ask, hey, tell me a little bit about what you do. Because they almost always, in turn, ask you. And that way, you don't have to say it without their permission. They've asked you, so now they're going to stay engaged because they're the ones that asked versus you wanted to tell them. It's a really cool trick. It, well, it's not really a trick, but it's a cool thing to understand. Okay? So whatever it is, whatever situation you're in, do everything you can to ask them what they do, and it's really fun how fast it comes back and they'll ask you what you do. It's kind of cool, okay? Okay. All right, so one of my things is, what you're gonna do is after you've talked about that and you say, I would love to show you a little bit more or tell you a little bit more about my product, or get you a sample after you've asked those questions and they're like, yeah, you can tell me a little bit more. You want to get their name and phone number. Do all of you have business cards? I know you have, um, Sue, you have, uh, what are those cards called? Blitz cards, okay? Um, I'm not a believer in handing things out if you're not gonna ask them for their contact information. The whole idea of them contacting you are small to none. And those products, those cards, and those business cards, those all add up pretty fast and cost you a lot of money. Okay, you're going to have to hand out a lot of cards before you're probably never going to make the money back. For every person who calls you, you're going to spend a lot of money to get the information out there. Okay, so you want to say sometimes if you're too scared to ask them for their contact information, do not take business cards. So you have the excuse, hey, I don't have any business cards on me, but I get your name and number so that I can follow up with you and get you some samples or information. Okay. That's my little trick for those of you who are too scared and you're tempted to give them a card and run. All right. Now what I do is I take my phone, I open it up to a new contact. Okay. Open it up to a new contact, hand it to them and go here. Why don't you put in your name and number so I make sure I spell it right. Ask them for their email address, have them put it in. Then when I'm right there, I text them for it. Text them and go, Hey, this is me. Now, if you're doing this face on Facebook or on any other social media, <clears throat> you want to ask questions, ask questions and say, you know what, I'm so excited to share more about this with you because you got through those three questions. Can I share something with you that's worked for other people so you can decide if it's a good fit? I say, you know what, this would be a lot easier to do if I could talk to you on the phone for just a few minutes. Can I give you a quick call? What is your phone number. I don't give them mine and expect them to call me. I ask them for theirs. You want to get people on the phone. That's where you can have a really good conversation, ask lots of questions, and help them with what you have to offer. Okay? So whether it's Facebook, whether it's face-to-face, -face, all of these things, you can totally you can find so many customers and connect to so many people more than you ever thought you could. Okay. And it's really fun. I know it's a little scary and we all hope that we could just paste post on Facebook and people go to our website and just buy. Okay. But unfortunately, um, that doesn't happen enough that can make you an income. Okay. But when you talk to people and you see them all light up, and they have the lashes on and they feel pretty or they shrunk a couple inches around their middle or whatever it is, how many of you have that experience and it's just a high? Like it just feels so good
to see them like make that little change and feel so good and be excited about what happened. Okay. I promise it is worth it to do this, to be able to get over that hump and, and, and help other people. It's absolutely worth it. Okay. So do you have a number down as to how many people you want to meet and how many new customers you want to make this week? Everybody put a number down at the top of the page. This week or in the next four weeks? No, we're now going to set a goal for just this week. Just this week? Okay. 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 All right. So I want you to, how many people am I going to meet this week and how many are going to become customers? I want you to put down what conversation starters you're going to use. And then I want you to look at your places that you're at and put, where will I be this week? So the ones that you're just automatically going to go. And then I want you to look at your calendar and go, how, when do I have time to go to a couple of these extra places I put down that I could choose to be at? Okay. The last thing I'm going to teach you about, I have just a few minutes. If you go toward to the back of the book, well, first of all, before we go there, hang on, stop. Okay, on the next page, there's a thing. You put the date, that's gonna to be today's date. You have name, phone number, where I met him, and follow up or action that you're gonna do next, okay? So you're going, here, you can keep track of your people. We wanna know exactly how many people you met by the end of the month, okay? So you can put people in there from Facebook, people in there from Target, people in there from the gym, people in there from, friend or family that you talk to, and then you're gonna journal. Okay, what questions worked effectively? What do I need to do more of? What am I gonna do different next week? The other thing I want you to do that's an incredibly, um, what do I say, creative, fun, energizing activity is to do a bucket list, okay? Y'all heard of bucket list? Bucket list of things you're gonna do sometime in your life, all right? So I want you to put down anything, any experience, anything you want to consume, anybody you want to meet, anything that you want to have happen one day on this bucket list. There are 50 boxes there. I want you to do everything you can, okay, to try to fill those in. Places you want to go, people you want to meet, hobbies you want to try, Okay, you've been talking about retirement, Sue. What all kind of things do you want to do, you and your hubby? I want you to fill that list up. And I promise you there's this energy that it creates. And little things on that list will even happen in the next four weeks quite often. I just want you to have fun with it. Okay? All right. Now, the very last thing, if you go towards the back of the book, there's a thing that says create open-ended questions. Creating open-ended questions. All right? Okay, so look at these real quick. These are questions after you get to start talking to somebody. These are questions that are gonna help you reveal needs of the individual you're talking to, okay? I have what's called the positive question. I like to ask them what's going well in your life and what that does, you know, what do you like about your health? What's your favorite product, you know, makeup product you wear? What could you not leave the house with without? Okay, all those kind of things. Then we have the reveal needs gently. What I, how I do that is the positive question often, like if you ask somebody their favorite facial feature, they'll be like, oh, I like my eyes, like me. I like my eyes, my lips, but man, I wish my face was a little thinner and my cheekbones popped out. That would involve me losing some weight, okay? Like there's things that I would love to change. I feel like I have kind of a high forehead. Okay, what would you change? People will, a lot of times when you ask them what they like about something, will automatically go into, like if you ask somebody what do they like about their habits for their health currently, they will go, well, I exercise now and then, but I shouldn't drink so much pop, and I should do this, and I should do that. People like it when you're positive, so you don't want to ask, you know, these, what do you wish was better about your health? That, like, doesn't feel very good. But there is a way to ask it if they don't automatically go into that, and that is, if you could just improve, you want to use the word improve versus change. If you could improve just one little area um, of your health, or if you could um, find one little new idea on a makeup tip, 
or if you could improve one area of your skin, what would it be? And they may go off with a list of five, but you want to make it sound like you assume there's very, very little they need to improve on. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the other thing you can do is ask, hey, on a scale of one to 10, okay, on a scale of one to 10, how much, um, let's see here, on a scale of one to 10, what do you like, or oh, sorry, let me rephrase that, I just got lost my focus. Okay, on a scale of one to 10, how much would you love to shrink a couple inches in an afternoon, okay? Or on a scale of one to 10, how much would you like to have longer full eyelashes? Or on a scale of one to 10, what's fun about that is it reveals things like, have you ever had someone say good, fine, well, and you don't know what that means? And for someone, they were really excited. Another person, it was just so-so, okay? Everybody's different. So the scale of one to 10 reveals a lot. So what I want you to do is I want you to go through these open-ended questions and I want you to think about your products and how you could ask people questions, okay, and reveal needs and find out information about them, okay? So I want you to practice these and send me some sample questions and I will help you tweak them. Because the whole thing is, so Jillian, the only nice part about this is you get to talk less and listen more. Okay, if you learn these questions, you won't have to talk as much as you think and you can still have success. Okay? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is awesome. Okay? People love to talk about themselves. Num the word I is the number one used word in the English language. So learn how to ask these questions. Let them talk and go, oh, you, you want, you know, eyeliner that doesn't come off? Oh, I've got some waterproof eyeliner. Which is your favorite color? Oh, I got some this. Okay, here you go. You can literally talk less and sell more. Okay? You poor little shy girl. It'll be okay. You can do this. Okay? All right? And those of us that are loud, we have to usually slow down and talk less. Okay? Like me. Okay? So work on your questions. Focus on your number and how many you want to um, find. Now, I want you to take a thing of post-it notes, or my post-it notepad is. I want you to write those numbers as to how many you want to meet and how many you want to turn into customers, and you put it down. There's a list of places on your notes. Put it in six to eight places. Write that number over and over and over again. Hi, Beth. I'm almost done. You're in the right place. Okay. Hang on a second. So put your goal down and post it in lots of places. And I promise you, you'll be somewhere and you'll end up meeting someone or someone will message you on Facebook or I don't know, the funniest things. You always will end up with stories to tell me that are just hysterical. You'll be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened, okay? It's so much fun. It all works out, okay? So just enjoy the process. Okay, Jillian? Try not to have nerves break down. It'll be okay, all right? Deep breaths, deep breaths. It'll be good, okay? But go forward and have a really good time getting to know people, asking questions, asking questions about your product. Create, the sooner you create those questions, the sooner I can help you tweak them and you can use them. Because we have four weeks to find that number of people that you put on your, put down, okay? So you've got to do this. Now look in your calendar and decide when you're going to be proactive about this and make sure those numbers are in lots of places in your car at work at home so that you're remembering and making it a habit to open your mouth and look for those people who need you okay this all comes together but you got to make it a habit and you got to practice and you got to just give it a try you'll have some weird bizarre experiences and you're going to have some really awesome ones too and they all will make you laugh in six months from now Okay. Okay. Hey. All right. Are you more hopeful and more excited? Yes. Yes. Even Jillian? Yes. Yay. <laughs> okay. Let me know how it's going. If you're getting stuck on something, email me. Okay. Don't wait a week. We only have four weeks. Okay. Don't wait a whole week because we, we got to get this. We got to help you get the skill as soon as possible. Start opening your mouth and put your 
put up your goals tonight. Okay, and start working on those questions as soon as you can. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay, have fun. Right. Thanks, Bye Michelle. Guys. You bet. Bye-bye.